This is No Filter. No Filter with me, Bobby Friction, and I'm really happy to say that uh, the man himself, and he is all man, even though when I first met him, he was literally, I, th- I think it's fair to say, transitioning from boy to man. Uh, it's Mr. Mumsy Stranger. Yes. Mr. Mumsy. What's up? Thanks, thanks for spending some time with us. Nah, man, I'm always up for it. You know that. I'm always I know. up for it. If I'm here, then I'm, I'm here, basically. And, and what I'm really excited about today is I know that there's... You're like an onion, all right? I don't, I don't mean like you <laughs> smell like one, all right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, there's so many layers to you and it comes out every now and again when you're on air. But most of the time, and if you don't mind me saying this, you're quite private. You'll do the promotion around music. Yeah, yeah. You'll come in and you'll give us little tidbits of your life. But you do actually, I think keep a lot back and that's fine you, you get me mm. but tonight is not about that tonight you gotta give me the key to your soul i don't mind bro i'm done i'll yeah. tell you i'll tell you whatever you want to know i'll tell you all right so um before we go anywhere else um i think you know how much i love that track rishi rich alka yagnik on the sample <laughs> uh, yourself mumsy um as well it can only be love what 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 does that track mean to you just out of interest um you know what when we uh, first worked on this record, it was actually we worked on this track two years before it got released. So it was it was something me and Rish done, and credit to Rishi because he's all about sampling. He's amazing at taking something and turning it into something else. As a producer, if, if you know Rishi, you know that he could take a sample and you'd be like, "Wow, what did he just do with that?" So credit to him for putting the song together with the whole sample and the R and B production he done on it and when he asked me yo mums what do you think of this I said this is weird I like it what, what you got in mind what do you mean weird though what do you mean weird as in a Bollywood track yeah. with, the, with an R&B hip hop production for yeah. example yeah because that's full because until uh, until then it had been done loads in hip hop but it was just literally two second samples exactly yeah so for me because that's a duet to me yeah exactly but all I can get from that is that try this <laughs> 100% now, come on if anyone's worked with Rishi and not everyone has worked with Rishi so yeah you know if anyone's worked with him you know that what I'm uh, talking about yeah of course now I want to pick up on your work maybe later on if we have time sure. I want to want to talk about uh, you and Rishi you and you because you know you, you've done so much by yourself you're kind of um not just a singer, you yourself are a, a producer and also, I'd even say, not a label manager, but a, a, a force of gravity and you sure. pull artists in. But I'm going to come to that later on. The first thing I really want to talk about is you and your background because when we first started, it was like, yo, he's Bangladeshi, he's Bangladeshi. <laughs> and that was that was the headline and there was nothing underneath that because sure. we didn't ask you. You didn't talk about it. You were just one of the most ambitious artists I'd ever met in my life, you know, when you first started. So just tell us a bit about your background. Were you born in this country? Are you true a true East Ender? I was a British. I didn't I've mean that. Brit- I'm not a visa officer, yeah? <laughs> I've got a British passport. <laughs> um, yeah, do you know what? I am I am East, from East London. I was born in uh, Tower Hamlets. Uh uh, Literally the, the the home of the Bangladeshi yeah. community in the entire UK. Exactly. Know. So I was born in Tower Hamlets. I moved to Newham when I was two. So my I've got five brothers, one sister. Wow. So I'm the second youngest. My sister's the oldest. Um, and uh, when I was two, my parents moved us to uh, Plasto, uh, Newham. And yeah. uh, so I didn't really, I wouldn't say I grew up in Allgate or in Tower Hamlets. I grew up in Plasto. So hey, hey, the East End yeah. now starts around about Shoreditch and ends somewhere in Essex. <laughs> exactly, it's mean? stretched out so much. So, um, yeah, uh, that's that's where I was born, and then I grew up in 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 a town called Plaster. Yeah. So, and what, was it like a? I'm just trying to get, get a, a vibe. Like, I know when I speak to someone, they know that my heritage is Sikh and Punjabi, yeah. and then I'll know that you've got this typical. Sikh Punjabi vibe it's not a stereotype and then I know like where my family matches that and where my family doesn't match it sure. so I'm going to ask the same to you yeah. did you have a typical Bengali upbringing is your family like a lot of other Bengali families out there What's it, I'm just trying to find um, the shape of your family okay so it's interesting so uh, yes at home but no in the area 
So, for example, if you go to like Allgate, uh, it's a brick lane. It's estates. Yeah. So your neighbour's Bengali. Yeah. The one across across the road to you is Bengali. Yeah. So it's quite Bengali. You know the estate. Yeah. And growing up with loads of Bengali friends, that was my older brothers. Yeah. Me no, because I was in Plasto. It was different. Yeah. So when I, as soon as I got there, like my neighbour next to neighbour was Greek. Yeah. And uh, across the road was Jamaican. Across the road Punjabi. So it was very mixed. So me and my youngest brother, we had a different upbringing. So um, yes, Bengali at home. Obviously, my parents uh, were quite religious, quite traditional. You know, and uh, they were they were quite religious. They are they they were religious. Yeah, yeah. My, both of my parents. Um, and uh, I, I find that interesting. I'm, I'm I'm not trying to interrupt you too much, but I yeah. find it interesting just because, in my experience, uh, it doesn't matter what your religion is within the British Asian community. A lot of the artists come from quite liberal parents, even not liberal in the Western sense, sure. but they're not usually that religious. You know. Yeah, yeah. And and so is it when you mean religious? Are we talking? If you don't mind me asking, praying five times a day yes. and all of that kind yes. of stuff. My 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 mum and dad pray five times a day, and uh, they were they were we were religious too. You know, we have tradition more religious religion than traditions, because you gotta understand when you're when you're in when you were bo- when you're born in London, you can't follow the traditions in Bangladesh or yeah. Pakistan or India because you're not born there. You know, you won't understand what they understand. When you go there for two two week vacation, sorry, you don't understand what yeah. they've known all their life. Yeah. You know, people need to get that, you know, right. So for me, yes, everything my parents taught me, my uncles, my nani, dada, everyone, yes, very traditional. Uh religion, it's nothing to do with a country, it's to do with yourself, yeah. your soul, your belief. That can happen anywhere in the world. Yeah. So um I would say more so it was traditional, but come on, man, look where I am now. Yeah. Obvi- they, it was obviously different because if it was full on traditional, man, I wouldn't be mumsy right now. <laughs> yeah. My parents would make, let me do music yeah. or any of that. So it was different. You know, yeah. they allowed me, no matter what they were doing, they allowed me to do what I wanted to do. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I'll get off this now, but yeah. um, I'm on, on the religious aspect, just because I find it really interesting, and sure. especially in the 21st century, that word religion and people's beliefs, we're always three questions away from someone asking you. Yeah. So are you a believer? Are you a practicer? Do you practice? Or um, you don't have to answer this. Sure. Or, uh, or do you intertwine your musical life with your spiritual life? I'm 100% uh, practicing. Uh, I practice personally, myself. Um, it's private to me. I don't make it a public affair unless it's Eid. I'll make that public. Um, because I think that's the way it should be. Uh, because if you don't do that, then sometimes people make judgments and etc. And I don't want my belief to be a public affair. Mm. It's it's my personal yeah. affair with God, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, that even must be hard because a lot of people, whatever their background, everyone's public these days. Everyone's like, "Yo, sure. I'm on social media. This is me doing this. This yeah. is me doing that. This is me being spiritual. This is me doing charity." Sure. So even that must be hard for you. Um, I don't, I, you know what? It's not hard because it's a choice. It's if you're making it hard. So let me give you an example. If you throw yourself out in the open and you want everyone to know everything, then it's hard. Because mm. then you got to keep that up to date. So if I'm telling everyone what I'm doing on a Friday, they want to know what I'm doing next Friday. Yeah. So I kind of like, I'm, I, I don't know if I skip the boat, but I am on social media and I'm not on social media because my base, my foundation doesn't come from social media it comes from selling CDs mm. it comes from radio stations recording cassettes you know yeah. like I've seen an era and then coming into this era so I would say more so I choose you know if I want to show a special moment online yeah. I will show it if I don't want to show it then I'll keep it special yeah uh, away from social media and it's it's hard when you want to be active so there is moments where I really want to be active and I hear that word, oh, you got to be active, you got to post, you got to do all yeah. that, you got, you got to put this out. And sometimes I might not, I might be in an inactive area, you know, where I don't want to be active. Yeah. So how do I post? You know, it's, it's a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. And that's when it's hard. So I might be around my in-laws, for example, and I don't want of course not. people who are not made for this to be on, on active on my story. Yeah, yeah. So what am I going to do? Go and create my own room. <laughs> and privacy and be active I yeah. can't do that you know so that's when it's hard like yeah. I wish I could just be active and selfish 
and be mumsy everywhere I go, but I can't. Now, that grew out of you answering the question about um, keeping your beliefs yeah. uh, to yourself. Sure. The last question now before I play Circles, which yeah. is my other favourite Mumsy track <laughs> of all time, um, and we'll talk about Circles as well. Uh, so the last question on that is... is um, Everyone's got a point of view these days, yeah. uh, especially when it comes to um, religion. Yeah. Uh, have you ever had it the other way around, where people have actually gone, why are you keeping it to yourself? Bruv, you know what? You should be out there. You should be out there promoting our religious structure. We should be out there out there talking about politics. Have you had it the other way around like that? Um, sometimes, but I think it's the ones who are really religious who would ask that question, that you should show that side. But, yeah. you know, music, Islam, it's not always a... A, a great combination, you know? Yeah. And and that is the truth. I'll say it how it is. Yeah. Nothing to hide. Um, for those who don't understand it, will straight away say, yo, that's wrong. And that's not right. And you shouldn't be doing it. Wait, wait. Uh, the, the guy, the people who don't un have a good understanding of so their So let me religion. give you an example. Yeah. Exactly. So it's an area. What I do is an area of work. It doesn't matter. It's work for me now. It's not just a hobby. Yeah. So there are other areas of work in the world for example, I might be that 1% and there might be a 99% what everyone else is doing, but you won't ask that question. Yeah. It's only because I'm in the limelight. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way I see it is everyone's doing something out there that might not tick a religion box or tick a political box. Yeah. For me, I'm doing me. Yeah. You know, and if you were me, then you wouldn't understand and you wouldn't ask that question. <laughs> You know, yeah. that's the way I see it. So yeah. I'm doing me. Yeah. I'm not harming anyone. Just like they're doing them. Yeah. Simple as that. I think it's best to keep it like that, man. I'm good at what I do. <laughs> I love this. This is this is my bread and butter. I mean, this, this is my work, all right? And my work ain't even radio. My work is just having close, soul-like connections to people who I respect musically. And thank you. We're just in our first little section. You've already given me that in spades, bro. No problem, bro. I'll carry on. Okay. And I was thinking about this the other day because, um, first of all, you know, we were talking about religion. We're going to move that aside. Yeah. Um, I grew up in an era where we fought collectively as British Asians, all right? And now people, rightly so, are proud of going, yo, I'm, I'm British Punjabi, I'm British Bengali. Hey, don't mess with us. We're the British Tamils and yeah. we do this and we do that. So all of that stuff's going on. Um, a lot of people, especially over the last 10 years, have gone, there's a real Punjabi stranglehold on the British Asian music industry. Yeah. And it's not the same for grime and stuff like that, but in terms of, you know, the kind of music you make. And um, with Nish doing his stuff now, uh, with me having to look to places like Dhaka and Canada for other Bangladeshi musicians, sure. have you ever come up against any kind of prejudice or just just general kind of just not knowing your background and, and not really knowing you because you're not Punjabi or you're not you're not Muslim Pakistani yeah. or Sikh Sikh Indian or stuff like that honestly every day <laughs> oh okay I didn't yeah. say no then. yeah no every, every day. day every day man every day I, I will say it how it is it happens every day it's happening while we are here well, am you know? I doing it to you? No, not you, but I'm open with it. You know, like, look, I always saw myself as a minority, you know? Um, Mumsy, he's Bengali. Mumsy, he's Bengali. Mumsy, he's Bengali. Like, great. Was that how you were introduced? Yeah, a lot of the times. And yeah. the thing is, it's, it's interesting because you shouldn't outline someone's culture or religion or what language they speak before you introduce them. <laughs> You need to outline that what they do, which is I sing and I rap and I produce. That's it, you know? And yes, I I understood it most of the times, but then after I was like, okay, you don't hear them going, yo, this is Usher and he's from Caribbeans. Or, yeah. you know, this is Joe and he's from, you know, and even Nairobi. on a Punjabi level, yeah. if, if, if um, back in the day, especially in the Bhangra industry, yeah. they go, all right, this is Gulwant yeah. and, and, and this is uh, Puramjit. Yeah. They're not going to sit there going, and by the way, he is of the Sikh religion yeah. from the Punjab. Yeah. They don't do that stuff, right. do they? Right. And I think that's the problem that we have in the music industry, you know? And the problem is when you outline something and you point it out too much, it's almost like you skip that person. Yeah. And you forget that person. That person is just a musician. You know, he's not just, he doesn't need, I don't need to be a part of a scene or a part of anything. And, and, and that's the problem. You know, sometimes things are too segregated. 
Yeah. You know, and when it becomes segregated, you miss key artists. Yeah. You know, you miss them. And you sometimes like, oh God, what, what happened what happened there? You know? And I do feel like that. Oh, I feel like that a lot of the times. And sometimes I get confused and I think, okay, things clearly like don't change, you know? Yeah. And you'd expect things to change after a long time, you know? And and again, it's you can only blame yourselves to be uh to be segregated. It's only when you change that you won't you won't see that change no more. Can I ask you honestly? Yeah. And this is maybe out of the realms of where we are now with sure. this interview. Is this an Indian Pakistani thing and then a Bangladeshi thing? As in Pakistan as a country is such a proud country yep. and they see themselves as the center of, of a world, all right? India is such a proud country and they see themselves as the center of a world. Do you feel sometimes in these these examples you've given that a lot of the people are just basically funneling and channeling that supremi su supremacy that you get in India and Pakistan? Um, I do think so, but I tell you what I believe. I think that there's the I, this is my uh, conclusion. I think the wrong people are at the wrong places making the wrong decisions. You know. Wow. Uh, and that is why artists like myself still feel a bit like, okay, I'm going to just carry on doing what I'm doing and being who I am, yeah. you know? I know, me me myself, like, I'm speaking to you about something happened, what, 12, 10 years ago? Yeah. When I met you? Yeah. But I'm still here. Still. Even, even more than 10 years, it was yeah. about nearly 15 years. Yeah, and I'm still here excited to be on your show. Yeah, yeah. And still, I've still got that connection with you. Yeah. Because you didn't make me feel like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you understand what yeah. I'm trying to say? And yeah. sometimes, because you're the right person. Yeah. You know, and sometimes when you've got the wrong people handling the wrong situation, you have these question marks in the air. So it's not anyone's fault. It's just the wrong person is doing the wrong job role in the wrong place, making the wrong decisions. And I think that is what it is, man. You know, it's not, I don't think it's the artists because look at dance. Amazing. It's not the music. Yeah. Right? It's not the producers. It's not the music. And it's not the artists. The artists are really now pulling this together. You, know? you only have to, if, if we take away the British Asian music industry, the way musicians in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh, the way they see themselves as one tribe and they don't even see the countries, you know, they just see themselves as the musicians of South Asia. That's it. They, they have this on yeah. lockdown. They get exactly. That's the way you guys are now living your yeah. your experience as Listen, well. Listen, on a norm, on a normal weekend, man, I'm listening to French music. Yeah, I'm listening to Arabic music. Yeah. you know, I'm listening to the music. I'm not going. Oh, that's uh, Bilal from Sudan, or you know, <laughs> that's. I'm not doing that. So the way I see it is, there are people who are still doing this. Yeah, you know, somewhere. And in you're the saying tree. they've got power. They have the power. Yeah. positions of power. And they're making the wrong decisions. They're in the wrong place in the wrong job role. You know, and. What happens is when you do that at the top, you rattle everything else. That's why you ask these questions. Why are you feeling like that? Yeah. Otherwise, bro, I should have been, yeah, man. Nah, man. Yeah. Everything's cool. Yeah. But everything isn't cool, man. You know, and, and I think there's a time and a place where things will be cool. And I think it will be it will be those people who make things cool because you've gone to them them extremes. Yeah. You know, and it's the nice guys, man. I think the nice guys sometimes get taken advantage of. And I'm not just saying I'm the nice guy. I'm not saying nothing like that. I just feel when people are nice, man, sometimes they don't they don't like it eventually. And the loyal ones and the nice ones are the ones that will shake that tree. Yeah. You know? All right. Wait, 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 wait. Let me just take a deep breath. This is this is what No Filter is all about. Um, and as ever, I've now got more questions. You uh, Forget me asking you questions. Sure. I'm going to be tossing and turning. It's not a euphemism, by the way. When I get home tonight in my bedroom, because that, everything you just talked about, that's madness. That feels like a very big truth that you're unraveling. Sure. I feel like either you haven't, you haven't got the words to express it fully yeah. and call it out for what it is, or you, you've got it, you just don't want to say it on air. No, I think I think what I've said is very clear. But um and, and the reason why the reason why you can't the reason why I can't explain it in depth yeah. because I could be wrong. Okay. You know, I didn't say I'm, the... I'm wrong and I hope things change because feelings are temporary. They could be permanent or they could be temporary. It only takes the right decision to make it temporary. You know? <sighs> All right, complete change of tone. All right, so look, bro, this last little section now. Um we've talked a bit about 
the music. Yeah. We talked about uh, you and your family sure. and, and all of that stuff. I just want to talk about um, you as a man now, all right? And I don't mean like how tall are you? And yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You as a man, because it, 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 it's, it's a bit strange because we don't know a lot about your life but we do know that you're in um a relationship you're in a in a marriage yeah you, you, you have children as yeah. right and that stuff's only kind of been you've been drip dripping that out over the sure. last couple of years um and i see it within you because i'm a father yeah all right i see it within you you know what i mean you you might have the hoodies on and the caps and the latest garms and sure. you sing all this stuff but you're a daddy yeah you're a proper grown-up kind of guy running <laughs> your business and sitting at home and basically sure. doing mortgages and all that kind of stuff. So what what kind of man are you? Just away from music? Yeah. Um, all right, so first of all, I'm a very routined man. So I look after my family. Um, I look after my dad. Uh, my mum is not in this world. She passed away in 2006. Oh, a lot of people know that. A lot yeah. of people don't know that. So I look after my father. Because uh, obviously he's still here and, you know, I just took responsibility straight away. Um, so, yeah, I'm a, fa I'm a very much family man. Away from music, I do the school runs. I love it. Yeah. You know, um, I put my kids to bed. Yeah. You know, I cook at home. You know, it's not just me. Like, it's not a Bengali thing where she's at home and she's just a wife. You yeah. Know? Um, she's heavily involved in, within my career. Um, and I'm also involved with any vision she has. So we work together. We're like a team. Um, and uh, you know everything at home is different to everything with the music so it's difficult it's almost like Batman it's almost like Bruce Wayne and Batman it's almost like when I put the suit on it's work mode yeah. I'm mumsy stranger then when I take that suit off I'm, I'm mummit yeah you know, and say that again. You're it. That's my is that name. your real name? Yeah, it's my real name. I should know that, uh, but you know, you know, I'm like, I, I'm like, don't tell me their real names. Nah, it's calm, man. Mumit. Yeah. Mumit. Yeah. <laughs> what's, your, what's your full real name? Mohammed Mumit Ahmed. Oh. Wah. Yeah. <laughs> Mashallah, as all my brothers would say. Mohammed Mumit Mumit Ahmed Ahmed. Yeah. I love that. Perfect. But yeah, Mo, so man, Mohammed. Yeah, full on, full on. Uh, Family man, you know, all the yeah. responsibilities, everything is normal. Yeah. It's just that other life that makes it a much, much harder, yeah. you know, to, um, you know, music, music mostly happens in the evenings if it's shows or studio sessions. Yeah. Uh, we try to do it during the day, but it just is so difficult because when you're like, when, like I said, when you're like Batman or like you're like a bat, your, your lifestyle's in the evening. Yeah. And that affects the morning. Yeah. So you're tired most yeah. of the day. So and that's where the family life is so difficult because of work. Yeah, because I'm sure you if have you to ended up sleep. snapping at one of your kids cuz you've not slept well, yeah. the guilt must be crushing. It's mad. It's mad. And that's why that's why being calm is probably the biggest skill set you need to be you need to have as a parent. Yeah. Parents, you know, just have a, a patience. You know, and, and I think that grows, but it's it's hard, Bobby. I'll tell you that right now. It is not easy, bro. It's very, 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 very hard, you know? Because when you're especially when you're a musician or your lifestyle's different because you it's almost like your other half has to, has to accept your lifestyle. Yeah. But they don't need to accept your lifestyle because they didn't sign up for for my lifestyle. Yeah. Well they have, but you know what I mean. They might have other dreams and other things they want to yeah. do. So um, it's it's difficult because my my diary probably my the diary is probably taken up with my my meetings and my my appointments you know so it's when you start compromising it becomes hard. I know you're a really great dad. I'm sure you're a great husband. All right, and I totally get the whole thing about family life yeah. because um, I'm supposed to be out there watching gigs. At visiting artists in their studio mm -hmm. and I don't do that because I choose to spend my weekends with my kids sure. because I ain't like that other generation I want to be a present father right? Yes. but I am going to ask this I was watching this thing recently where um, a woman said if you're with essentially a, a sportsman or a, an actor yeah. or a, a musician you've got to realise that it doesn't matter how nice they are ultimately everything's about them because that's why they've gone into those careers. Yeah. Are you guilty of narcissism, of of selfishness within yourself because of the nature of what you do with with your family? I am guilty because t 
10 years it's been uh, where I've been away every New Year's. But this year I stayed home. Because my daughter, she asked me, Daddy, can you stay home? So I didn't go on no shows last year yeah. for New Year's. Yeah. 10 years, they, 10 years, Bobby, I've been away every New Year's. You were never there? Never there. You know, Christmas, New Year's, because of what I do. And not just that, it's almost like I've got a meeting, whatever, big deal, whatever, yeah? And they've got an appointment, dentist appointment. Mm. How do you weigh that up? Because the dentist appointment is also important. Of course. They've got wisdom tooth pain, they've got wisdom tooth pain. Yeah. You know, it's it's almost like, yes, it is very selfish, you know, but I've... Are you, therefore, are you selfish? I, yeah, I am selfish. I'll say it how it is. Um, but it's, it's, it's something you have to commit in order to fix. Yeah. So I'm at a point where now we have a Google calendar <laughs> and... Uh, we follow each other's timetable and yeah. we kind of work around. You've got to be a genius. This. <laughs> yeah. You really have to be a genius, mate. And we've come to a point where sometimes it does become difficult, but we, we kind of get by, man. You know, like, it's almost like wrestling. Yeah. Tap in, tap out. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. So it's cool. But yes, definitely more the selfish side comes from me. Well, I didn't think we'd finish this with you admitting that you were slightly selfish, but that's yeah. how it's going to end. Not perfect, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no one's perfect. Um, thanks so much for coming in and doing this No Filter today, Mumsy. Thank you for having me. I, you know, after all those interviews where we talked about the music, I really feel like we've got a true essence of, of you, you know? We no, it's nice, it's nice to know, man. Honestly, I appreciate this show and I appreciate this idea and everything. It's great. And I just want to say this, and I just have to say this, um, especially if you're listening at home as well, and you, I think you need to hear this. Um, what you've done since the beginning of your career is just amazing. I just think it's really important, everything that you've done. This goes back to what we talked about, about um, uh, Indian and Pakistani mm -hmm. hegemony, almost. I think it's really important for the, the Bengali heritage kids of this country mm -hmm. to have seen you actually be around for nearly two generations now i think it's really important what you've done working with the people in the industry mm -hmm. and then reaching out with the urban side of things i think everything you're doing with your family and everything you've done in terms of making your mum and dad proud and also being able to balance the religious side of your life and then the fun side or the work side of your life is really important um You've killed it, mate. Thank you, you. You've absolutely <laughs> killed it. You, you are, are a bona fide British Asian, British Bengali legend, bro. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Kind words, man, honestly. We'll just leave it there, yeah? You're a legend as well, bro. <laughs> <laughs> In my own lifetime. <laughs> See you later, man. Peace up. This is Bobby Friction, Asian Network.